and has canceled on me twice now. Wow. And you, because you're an adorable, amazing human being, <laughs> were like, yes, absolutely, I'll make it happen. And I was like, thank God that somebody's coming through because you were the fourth person that I had, and I don't want to, I know that sounds awful, but I had all these people booked, and I was like, well, can you bump your date up? Can you bump your date up? Right. And everybody was like, I can't, holidays, I can't, Christmas, can't, out of town. And I was like, dear God. And then I contacted you and I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I don't even have to like push you to February. <laughs> so I can do this now. Well, I'm an atheist half Jew, so the holidays, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, and I fucking love everything about you already. <laughs> like I, I wanted to talk to you since the very beginning, since I saw you at Cuckoo Lane. That was a, a huge night for me, um, just in terms of meeting people and... I had my self-esteem crushed because someone came up to me and said, you know, you're way too dirty. Yeah. You need to soften the blow, you know, quit, quit yeah. offending people. You're just going to be the known as the dirty sex lady comic can, of Maryland. Stop it. And Can you tell me who said that to you? Corey Cohen. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. Was that a name? She did well. Very good. <laughs> Wait, one second. I want to get this real close to um, oh, I'm sorry. No. Who, who said that to you? Um, you want to write it down? If you don't want to rat anybody out, that's no, okay. No, I mean, he knows that I'm still pissed at him for it. It's well, here's awkward. The thing. His here's the thing. He said it. So it's it not is the like lamest comedy rivalry of all time. It's not even a rivalry. It's a, I just, okay. I just ignore him pointedly whenever I see um, him. I, I'm wish, his, his I wish I could have gotten what you said. <laughs> I'm really bad at the cough yeah, name. Yeah. I'm really bad at that. Do you, here, write it down. Hold on one second, everybody. Okay. <laughs> not a pen, bro. Just write it down there. Throw shit at me, Michael. Son of a bitch. But I mean, the hey, point is it. that you s seeing me and complimenting me so much and giving me so much support that I don't even really know this person. Okay, no, good. I don't know this person. <laughs> That's why I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, what? Who? Gary Oldman? Who's <laughs> was he there? I wish. Right. Everybody. Well, Laura would have died. She loves him. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw you, Cuckoo Lane, and I'm not gonna lie, I was with Laura, and I was totally sober because I was going through like. Um, I couldn't drink for like five days a week or some shit. And I had medication. I'm not, I know, I'm not kidding. Yeah, you were and like, dieting. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, never. Uh, as you can very well see. Oh. I genuinely yeah. like, I don't, I'm not drunk on stage, but like I always have like a drink or two to like loosen up. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed that if I'm completely sober, I talk faster. And that's something that I was discovering about myself that night at Coco Lane. But Laura and I sat down to watch the show while like there's 40 people outside. Meanwhile, there's a comedy show going on inside. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you, what is the, what is the point of that? Why right. are you here? Oh, it's okay if we sit through your stuff, but you go outside when everybody else is on stage. Meanwhile, I'm taking names. I'm fucking writing names now. Oh, okay, well, this person went outside. Fucking, <laughs> I'll remember You're that. Awesome. I'll remember that. <laughs> so I fucking loved you. As soon as I, I couldn't even, I was laughing. First of all, my laugh is pretty obvious. Thank you, Sean Connery. Ha, 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 ha. Uh, and Laura knew it. She was like, oh my God, you love her. And I was like, I do love her. Oh. And then as soon as I went home and I, I think I friended you on Facebook immediately. And then I was telling you like, don't change because I think you told me right. people say that you're too dirty. And when I started like almost five years ago, everybody said that about me and you are way dirtier than me. <laughs> so don't ever change. Thank you. Let them be comfortable with you. Don't you conform for them because the right people are going to, are going to sit down and listen. Yeah, I mean, it's people have told me before, you know, okay, you can save your dirty stuff or your more offensive stuff for the end of your set. But I just like to get, why? Yeah, why? I why? just like to hit them hard why? right you from can, the jump. Yeah, you could just <laughs> kick through a, a wall like the Kool-Aid guy with your jokes. <laughs> and you could like be like, oh, yeah, and everybody's <laughs> frightened. And I love it. I love everything about it. I, I'm... I mean, I think it does somewhat work for me a little bit just because people don't expect it coming from me. Yeah. Because of the way I look, you know. They, well, that and you're fucking adorable and sweet. Oh, Look how you. nice you are. Thank Look you. how nice she is. You wouldn't <laughs> think that she is like dirty, creepy, molester, uncle jokes, would you? No. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have a lot. I know, but I would never think that. I'd be like, oh, she's so cute. I, I, I don't know. Do you have a problem? And I, I've heard your material a lot and it's based a lot of like what you've gone through in your life. You know, yeah. it's very funny. Yeah. Especially my dad. He is the butt of all my jokes. <laughs> But I mean, I have such a hard time sitting down. I honestly try to write clean. Yeah. I But I can't. Um, because I don't find clean humor that funny. Right. There, That's the problem. If you don't think it's funny, then it, it's going to be difficult for you to write jokes that you don't think are funny. You're like, well, this isn't good enough. So what's the point? Right. Um, my biggest thing was with Andrew Unger at McGoobies, who I mm. love and adore. Like, and I know you and I are going to discuss McGoobies, but he's probably, it's probably nothing he's never heard. Mm-hmm. I love Andrew Unger, and he's totally manic and crazy, but that's what makes him <laughs> wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
And he always said, like, do you have a clean 10? Do you have a clean 10? Do you have a clean 10? And I'm like, I could. I could have a clean 10. And he even said, I don't care if you bomb. Just be clean. And I'm like, I get what you're saying, and I'm with you. But I care if I'm bomb. I'm the one that's trying to tell jokes here. Like, I'm the one that's going to cut myself later if I don't get a couple laughs. Like, that's why I'm here. So it was it was hard, but I ended up just omitting the really, you know. Well, and wouldn't it be even more depressing if you wrote a clean ten that you didn't find funny, and no, people I agree with were you. people were rolling out of their chairs laughing over it? I would be like, oh, you, know. you simple-minded fucks. Because it doesn't come from <laughs> it doesn't. They don't come from your heart. I don't care what dick jokes I tell; they come from my heart. They do come <laughs> from they your do. heart. Um, <laughs> I genuinely understand and I didn't even write a clean 10 I would just omit the really edgy jokes like I wouldn't tell my um my gag reflex joke or something and I wouldn't curse and that ended up it made it a cleaner 10 but not clean like cookie cutter clean and I mean it was acceptable and then I got to the point where like you could get away with a few here and there a few slinging a few dirty ones here and there because the the audience really enjoys that Mm -hmm. unless they know they're in for an all clean show they are a little bored the only issue is is that's not that's the comedian that's the headliner telling you like i want someone to open clean because they believe that if you don't you are desensitizing the audience and if you're already punching them with the dirty edgy stuff then the headliner is going to have like no gusto right and i i completely agree with that like if somebody like sunny fuller went on before me i would have a rough time keeping up they would want that the entire hour. Mm-hmm. You know, it's easier when you follow like someone that's like cleaner, a little more cookie cutter, has like a couple marriage and kids. You know what I mean? It's easier that way. Well, but speaking of Sonny Fuller, though, Sonny performs <laughs> at Magoobies all the time and he's one of the dirtiest, if not right. the dirtiest. But Sonny's also a feature. Oh, so this was, was for like hosting. Gigs. Right. And, and it's okay. very comic specific too. like they it's there's a formula. Well, I wouldn't be able to open for. I don't know. Um, who's the really clear? Brian Regan. Mm-hmm. He's a super clean comic. He doesn't want any. He he literally curses not once. Right. But for instance, I've opened for like Donnell Rawlings twice before. And he's he's off the wall. And he's one of the most <laughs> brilliant comedians I've ever seen in my life. Like <laughs> hilarious. But you know, that's more my speed. Like, yeah, an urban audience or, you know, like half urban audience that's like used to dirty jokes and like the F word are going to be totally fine with 10 minutes of me. Right. But because he's you know he's gonna take it to the house yeah he's gonna bring it up he's gonna punch up (laughs) yeah and it i mean it's formulated it's just how it is like i was uh booked to open for paulie shore there Mm -hmm. and they didn't um they didn't want me to host because he wanted a clean host so even though andrew had already booked me he was like all right we'll just be the guest spot all weekend so instead of being the 10 minute clean host i did like seven to eight minutes of guest spotting in between which was a lot easier on the workload but at the same time it was like i get it like people just want the audience to be warm but not desensitized to all the all the crazy fun edgy shit that the headliner has to say right well and that that's awesome though that he at least was willing to work with you that way oh yeah andrew's a great guy like if he promises you something he wants to deliver and that's the one thing i will say about him but it is a little bit of like a a little there's a lot of politics involved when it comes to the clubs like that and i mean i'll I'm sure Mike Fanazzo and like Jimmy Merritt will be the first one to tell you that. Right. Those are the two people that I know get booked the most at comedy clubs locally because they are, um, they are cleaner and they're a little more, I don't want to say acceptable, but like, you know, a little more relatable. Well, the thing about Mike Fanazzo, his sets at open mics are very dirty or yeah. can be. Yeah. Um, they mostly tell stories, but he, they're hilarious. But I'm sure I've never seen him perform in a club setting before. Right. So I'm sure he tones it down for that. Jimmy Merritt, I was shocked, uh, hosted or open for uh, Jim Norton. Yeah. And it was such an odd fit. You think so? Yeah. Like I was thinking maybe some Bazo or Sonny Fuller would open for Norton. Yeah. But maybe it's like what you were saying. Tommy's outrageous. They, Tommy's. Oh, I love Tommy. He's right. My favorite. And he's hard to follow. Like if he's not the headliner, I feel sorry for whoever goes after him. Right. To be totally honest with you. And I know that you may think I'm biased. Because no. I'm friends with the guy but I, and I love him. But yeah, like he's he's brilliant. He shouldn't even he should be traveling somewhere. He should be all over the place. Yeah. He should have had his hour special by now. Oh, yeah. Damn right. Damn right, Samantha. <laughs> All right, so... Um, I feel good, so good I'm talking positively about people. I know. Well, let's cut the shit. <laughs> let's cut this positive shit out of the way. Um, I asked you because I got you a cocktail beforehand, so you are yes. 23. I am 23. Um, you've been doing stand-up for one year. One year, yes. Yes, since, you just um, had your... November. Inter- okay, cool. Why did you want to get into stand-up? 
Um, well, I was fired from working in a psych ward at a hospital. That's a that's probably a 10 minute bit right there. <laughs> For falling asleep in the room while I was watching someone who was on suicide watch. That is the best <laughs> joke I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, I I haven't gone there yet. I don't feel like I could pull it off yet. Something that personal or something that deep. I don't know. It's time. It's time. Okay. <laughs> don't let him tell you yeah. when it's time. You know when it's time. I have jokes about my mother that five years later I still have a hard time doing. Wow. So I get it. It's yeah. like a little too dark of a place. You're like, oh, the wounds are still deep in there. Right. Uh, that was a whole fucking crazy that experience, though. <laughs> What'd you say? But that's blood. That's blood. <laughs> Dude, that joke's hilarious, but that's not even oh, a joke. It's just like a one little story you told me, and yeah. I'm like, that's brilliant. Yeah. Well, I fell asleep while watching someone. In a psych ward who was on suicide watch. Right. Because, you know, I hated myself so much. I should not have been watching someone on suicide watch. That's like did a four-year-old watching a three-year-old. Well, did they kill themselves? <laughs> Is that why you're upset? No, no, they didn't kill themselves. Um, It was just, and I just fell into a deep, dark depression. It was around this time last year, a little before during the holiday season. Okay. I had to get a job at fucking Target. Yeah. I worked there for two weeks. I hated my life. Yeah. Sat down, watched Doug Stanhope's special, Beer Hall Putched. I've always been a fan of stand-up. Yeah. I love Doug Stanhope. He's my personal hero. Um, and I watched, and the joke that, I don't even know if it's a joke, but the bit that he did about his mother's suicide, it changed my life. Yeah? I saw someone that could turn their pain, the worst thing to ever happen to them, and laugh at it and be able to talk about it and share it openly with people. Someone who had no fear and I was like, you know, when you have stand up in your life, you can overcome anything. Anything can become a story. Anything can become a joke. Yeah. Nothing can ever hurt you again. That like, is an impressive way to look at it. Don't yeah. you think, <laughs> do you feel though that like, even though it, it looks that way that, I mean, they're still hurting. Right. Absolutely. It's just the, uh, like, I'm guessing an outlet. An out. Yes. Yeah. And I needed an outlet desperately. So how did you, I mean, what, where did you go? What did you look for? <laughs> like, did you know someone you were like, I need to tell some fucking jokes i knew no one i had no friends before i started doing stand-up this is the only really way i had no friends at you're all you're so flipping sweet how is that <laughs> possible um yeah that's another long story but i well, did you never used to be sweet no i mean i dropped out of high school at okay. a young age so i didn't stay connected with people my age um okay i've always had a really hard time fitting in i'm very shy i'm very quiet i don't see i don't see that about you right well people say oh my when they get to know my personality better they're like oh my god i wish you would have opened up to me before right you know but we we totally ignored you we totally blew you off before you actually started talking um, so um you, you, you dropped out of high school what year <laughs> um i dropped out of high school let's see it was about 2007 2008 i was 16 so what your junior year sophomore i was 16 my junior year but i, I was a summer repeated baby. a year okay it was technically my sophomore year but i was still a freshman okay and you dropped I out think, because yeah. you just didn't feel like going on you didn't have friends like what um i dropped out because i was bullied incessantly what school did you go to do you not want my to say oh no i don't give a shit okay <laughs> um i went to north county in glen burnie um a ghetto white trash mess it's Glen Burnie. I believe that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, like literally they had a daycare there for all the pregnant chicks. So there were many of them. Well, um, who the fuck was bullying you? What's their issue? What's their problem? Because they like yo boys and shit. I can get uh, you a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take I'm about to personally get fucking names. <laughs> I'm about to go handle some business. I can't even, I can't even remember their names. Um, it was because, because I was, they're me, they're, they mean nothing. That's why. Yeah. They're pieces of shit. Yeah. I was just a fat, awkward girl who just liked to write Harry Potter fan fiction in my spare time. Dude, I was fat and awkward in high school. And I was <laughs> a super nerd. I was like, the editor in chief of my paper. That's I, fucking awesome. No, I was like. In a, mm -hmm. my, in my free time, I was an English teacher's aide. Let's be honest. Like, I was a fucking nerd. <laughs> the biggest kick I got was smelling all the fresh newspapers <laughs> that I had met so many deadlines to create. Like, uh. that was, like, my highlight of being a I don't senior. believe you, though, because English teachers are awesome. No, mom. And hands down, they are. Right. And, like, my one was my newspaper yeah. advisor the whole time. But I'm, I'm being <laughs> totally honest with you. Like, I was, I made jokes in high school so I could be friendly and funny. Like, I was unattractive, awkward, chunky girl. Like, right. I didn't like myself. You know, and there were so many hot little soccer bodies running around the yeah. school. And the only way that I could, like, do it was, like, through written word is to, like, be funny. Right. That's so crazy. I, like, that's that's weird, though. Did you know back then that you wanted to do stand-up? Uh, my dad had always been saying it to me since the beginning of time. And I was like, ah, oh, that's such a pipe dream. That's crazy. Um, and then Andrew Unger, believe it or not, when Magubius was underneath the Bowman, talked me into it one night after... 
Wow. He was just like, just do it. Just sign up for an open mic. And then I was like, all right, whatever. I did. And then for that entire month, I think I lost like 10 pounds. I was so nervous. I would practice in my mirror, practice in my hairbrush. I would write jokes, write jokes. I would talk to my friends. I was like, oh, God, I'm going to throw up. It's crazy. <laughs> and then I finally did it, and I just kept doing it. I just kept getting doing open mics, and I kept placing, you know, and I was almost tied for first, like, the third time up. And wow. it was just like, man, I'm doing. I want to do this all the time. And then I didn't know there were actually other open mics that existed. Like, I only knew of McGoobies. So other comedians that tried out in these contests were like, oh, you should do this room. You should do this room. You should do this room. And I'm like, there's other rooms? <laughs> like, I had no right. idea. None whatsoever. That's insane to me that you performed your first time at McGoobies because yeah, um, I was almost a year in when I did the new Comedian of the Year competition. And after McGoobies, I almost quit. Really? Tell because me tell I, me about that. I, I just stood on there and I said something out there and crazy and the crowd went cold. Yeah. And I'm used to like performing in backroom bars where yeah. everyone is offensive and nobody gives a yeah, shit. Everybody's high off and I immediately and shit. Right. <laughs> I immediately had the feeling that I didn't belong. Yeah. And that was the first time, even after I bombed and ate a bunch of dicks on stage, that's the first time I felt like I didn't belong. Did, um, so it's crazy to me that you, as someone who had never even performed, was standing up there in front of a huge crowd. Yeah. That was the biggest crowd I had ever had, and it intimidated the hell out of me. Oh, but yeah. But you had never done it before. Yeah, i never done it before. <laughs> that, that's crazy. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, trust me. I didn't even know there were other open mics. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, God, <laughs> I'll compete, I guess. You know, and I, I, have like <laughs> I, guess. A, I have like a big piece of paper on stage, and I, when I go back and watch the video, A, I was like way thinner because I was going through this weird relationship thing where i just was never eating and i was like borderline or exic oh uh, that's awful i know which sucks because when you first get in the business people just think that you're that thin i'm like no no no, i was sick then this is my normal <laughs> right. size this is my normal size <laughs> um and i you know you, you have those like little crutches you know and i kept saying um and i kept playing with my hair and i kept fucking <laughs> around with like the the cord you know just those <laughs> tiny little things and i'm like is that mine oh, okay and um I mean, I just didn't know that there was anything else out there. And yeah, I mean, luckily, I pretty was I was pretty okay with it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll do it next time. I want, I want to get better at that. And then I just kept doing it. And then the third time I was up, I I was tied for first place. And they took like a, an audience vote. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it was it was just, I was like, yeah, I'll do these other rooms too. And that it was, was so cool. Uh, yeah, I just, I fell in love with it. Even though people were still that way towards me. They were like, oh, you're too dirty. You know, what are you trying to do? Or just jokes are all about sex or just they didn't, you know, nobody takes to you in the beginning. Right. They're just like, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. And immediately I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. So that's my beginning. I don't know what I'm doing. I need a trainer. It's like working at a fucking steakhouse. How do you feel about people taking comedy classes? I've never taken any. And I mean, if that's something that, you know, that's a good question. If that's something that you feel you need, you know, I there are people that work better with others. And there are people that work better by themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think it's good that you get other opinions and views on stuff. But at the same time, like, how much money are you going to pay somebody to tell you what to do? Right. Like, how many famous people do you know have done that? Probably none. Yeah, you're right. So. I mean, I just, I would like to maybe take something similar just for the business aspect of stand-up. Yeah. Because I have no idea about any of that. Like, all that is completely over my head. And I don't even think I have to worry about it. Um, ask ask a lot of questions. Right. Tommy Sambazo helped me out a lot, um, telling me to like get a business card, get a portfolio, get your stuff on video. My stuff isn't on YouTube, but I have personal videos that I can send someone because oh, cool. in the beginning I didn't really know many female comics mm-hmm. and I didn't want anybody to like steal my shit. Right. And I know that sounds weird. But no, that's not weird at all. It happens all the freaking time. Yeah, and I definitely <laughs> it happens all the time now. I see it. Yeah. I see. It. I there was a joke um, that someone said. At Myth and Moonshine that was like verbatim on Reddit. And I mean, wow. I mean, just stuff yeah. like that that I see. I see it all the time. Mm-hmm. And it's sad and stupid, but. <laughs> 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 but no, ask questions. Ask a ton of questions. Like I remember getting flack for starting a website like my second year in from like an actual room booker. Wow. And like you think they would be impressed with that. Dude, publicly on Facebook, too. It was like a passive aggressive rant piece of shit status. And I wrote one like 20 minutes later saying like, look, if you're doing something that is outside of the box and you're following a dream and you're doing something you want to do, have a website, have a business card, be the part that you want to be. And I mean, I was like, well, who are you to tell me? You know, I mean, I'm just do whatever you think is right. Like, don't listen. These there's naysayers everywhere. Right. They're all over the place. All over the place. They are. It, it's sad. <laughs> it's awful. Because and it's already a man's game, and you're a woman, and it it's is. twice as hard for you. 
It is. And I hate bitching and complaining about that. You, but it, it is. It's, I was at something last week. Well, they're already saying that you're a woman, so you might as well bitch and complain about something. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> I'm on my fucking period. Yeah. <laughs> um, last week, I was at a, an open mic. And afterward, I mean, I did okay. It wasn't my best set. I was sitting with some friends, some male comics, and some other people came up, and they literally reached over my head to shake all the guy's hands. Yeah. And they didn't even look Did at you me. acknowledge that? I mean, I just I just looked at them. I'm I'm so used to it now. Yeah, but you're it, so nice. I would have been like, no, no, that's okay. I wasn't <laughs> sitting here. Yeah, <laughs> it just that shit happens to me all the time, though, Wendy. You gotta be like, aggressive. I'm doubly ignored because I'm a chick and I'm fat. First of all, you know, you're not fat. Well, I mean, I'm you better fat. N- knock that shit off. Right I'm fat now. enough. I'm I'm I am unfuckable to a lot of them. So okay, I'm I'm unfuckable, and I'm a woman, so yeah, I have don't... no purpose. See, to... that is wow. <laughs> And see, that comes from all my like anxiety and shit like that from no, the bullying I totally... in high school. But that's the way I see it. So I don't care about people who don't acknowledge me or people who think I'm invisible. Right. But that's, first of all, I need you to change your change your way of thinking. <laughs> yeah. Because you are a, a woman and you are attractive and you're fucking nice as shit and you are fuckable. Thank you. I've seen some pretty, pretty gruesome chicks get laid, okay? Let's be honest <laughs> with each other. I'll be <laughs> right. up. See, Michael, Michael's been, he probably thought three times about banging you already. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. see, look, look at her, little rosy cheeks. I, I either like them bald or I like them completely hairy like my boyfriend. So. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. Uh, he's gri- a grizzly man. <laughs> yeah. But don't, don't, first of all, I keep saying first of all, but there's no second of all. I don't know. It's like a thing that I do. You need to make yourself present. Like, you're just like, oh, right. I'm used to it. No, fuck you. I would stand up and be like, excuse me, I was sitting here. Right. So you do me a favor and not reach over my head like I'm invisible. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Thank you. They would probably shit themselves because. Yes. Yeah, because but you a lot of it is my fault, too, because I'm so shy. I have a hard time going up to people myself and introducing myself. So, I mean, I, it's not completely because of that. Yeah. But I definitely <laughs> don't. I don't like that. Yeah. I would definitely say something about that. <laughs> but I, I mean, even if I know. wasn't a comedian, and even if I didn't do time in a room, if nobody knew who I was, which is pretty much the case most of the time anyway, I would still do that mm-hmm. i'd be like excuse you that's rude you're mm-hmm. leaning over me right what if i have lice you know what i mean like back up <laughs> i just no you can't don't stand for that when anybody yeah. doesn't hold a door for me i immediately go uh, uh, thank you <laughs> i love you wendy yeah no. that's so i need to have like a wendy towson in my subconscious i will like, seriously follow you around yeah. all the time <laughs> i'll follow you around and be like no you say this say this <laughs> yeah just have a little backbone as soon as you get that one moment where you're you get like a little nervous and your stomach starts twisty mm-hmm. because you know you're about to step outside of your box and confront an issue with a stranger as soon as you have that first one you're done right you become like a new person you're like oh okay i start getting i told that out of walmart yeah i told that person that they were in the wrong and i'm gonna continue to do that <laughs> i care if you're a man i'll fucking take you <laughs> i will i would take you and i will die trying you gotta be fearless about that shit be fearless i can see why like the military men like dig you because you know, what's really funny so, is i don't like so the military, military guys <laughs> <laughs> when i met chris i had no i was like what you're in the army <laughs> i had no idea you're i'm like you're not an alpha ego maniacal weirdo guy you know, like he's not <laughs> yeah he just he seems like such a puppy oh, he's when, adorable when you, meet him, you know he's just so nice he is super but nice. he looks like a skinhead i'm not gonna lie yeah well, a, a part of him does i mean i get he, it he's attractive but I'm, no i get the visuals like, yeah he gets a lot of he gets a lot of flack <laughs> because he's judged on his appearance but mm-hmm. like most of us right judge, exactly judge on our appearance but i mean part of me i i talk with other girls you know in the scene and part of me is almost glad that i'm a little like homelier looking or kind of under the radar because the shit that they have to go through people only saying oh she's only got booked for this because she fucked the guy or because she's hot Okay, so this is where this discounted. is where we're gonna get into a really good conversation. Yeah, <laughs> um, I understand where you're coming from, and I'm gonna be totally honest with you. And I see it also, and mm-hmm. I do feel that those females bring it on themselves. Uh. Instead of standing up and saying, "I'm funny, I can write jokes. This is what I'm made of," mm-hmm. they are sleeping with that one guy or sleeping with that other guy and getting booked because of whatever else that's not them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you're putting the work in, but are you? I mean, if you're reading off your fucking phone on stage for 10 minutes, I'm sorry. Like, I don't, you know what I mean? Right. I don't want to be rude and I, well, whatever works. Will you stop it? I don't want to be rude and I don't, whatever works for you. I genuinely like a lot of the females. They're nice and they, like, Michelle Belenke is, she puts in the fucking work. Oh yeah, I love her. Okay. And like, Kim Ambrose puts in the work. You are putting in the work. 
I see some people that don't put in as much work. Like Candace Saunders is one of the hardest working females I've ever met in my life, in my whole life. She puts in some serious work. Kat Timps puts in the work. It's difficult when you're trying to be taken seriously, but at the same time, you are also that other person that people are judging you for. Right. So I get both sides of it. Yes, you are putting in work, but at the same time, we only know you for this this thing. Mm-hmm. And that's sad, but it's true. There's um there's a specific female that I don't really care for, and um if she listens, I don't know, but she has friend requested me on Facebook, and I I'm not even I don't even ex- I've never accepted it because this person has been in six rooms with me, mm-hmm. in shows with me before, has never said one word to me, but has invited my boyfriend to do things um, at her home and or be a part of something and uh she's a little too mm, liberal with the facebook statuses Mm -hmm. and um the words that fly out and it's just stuff that i just really don't want to be associated with i don't want somebody to look at that person and think oh well wendy's cool with that person Mm -hmm. she must think that's okay or this is great or she would probably book her in a show and it's like now i don't i don't want to be i can't i can't do that well, it's better that you're that way instead of being fake. And yeah, and I into know an that awkward situation. And I know that people think I'm a bitch, but I already I've worked so hard to do this for myself, you know. And I feel I feel like I don't. I'm trying to be nice, and I don't know why. Like I'm really just trying to be like polite and. It's because guess what? When you're a woman and you're not nice, you're automatically a bitch. Dude, I know, but I'm already <laughs> a bitch, so it's like, why am I even pretending? <laughs> I just don't want to be attached to those negative stigmas. I don't. And see, people um, have this thing about women where they're saying, oh, she doesn't like this girl. It's because of jealousy. Yeah. But that is not the case. I'm not it, jealous it, at it's all. It's because of cattiness or jealousy. It's That's I'm not actually, always it. I'm not jealous. Samantha, I'm going to be honest with you. I feel bad for those girls. Like, I feel bad because now you... Are, <laughs> now... Yeah, thank you, Michael. Now you're going to have a way harder time because people aren't taking you seriously because of those things. And I mean, I'm sad for you because if this is what you really want, if you want this so bad and this is a goal of yours, why? Why would you, why wouldn't you make it a priority? Why wouldn't you take it that seriously? You know, like that, that I feel bad Mm -hmm. that you just don't understand. Like now everyone's looking at you in a different light, not because you're funny, not because you write jokes, but because this happened or you did this. And that's, that makes me sad. And I, I just feel genuinely bad for these girls. They have no idea. That's why, please don't, please don't fall into the cusp no. of, of craziness. <laughs> I mean, I, I am crazy, but in, in different ways. Yeah, but don't fall into that cusp of craziness. That's, that's why, I mean, I know you're in a great relationship with another comic, but I said before I even started, I will never date another comic. Yeah. I don't want to shit where I eat. <laughs> I don't, trust me, I dated a comic before. Yeah. I dated Mike Turpin. He was my ex-boyfriend. Right. And Luckily, we're we're really good friends, and he's a wonderful guy, and I love him. That's a very rare situation. Yes. Like, we get along, we talk all the time. <laughs> I didn't want to date another comic ever. I actually, like, for six months, was like, no, sorry, I can't. You know, you live too far, <laughs> or you're too young. And I just had all these excuses of why I never wanted to give this person time. Mm-hmm. And to the it was to the point where I was like, all right, fine, uh, one date. And then I broke that date, and he was like, what a fucking bitch. You know what I mean? Like, I kept pushing him away and then finally went on one date and then we had like a normal functioning adult conversation <laughs> and I was like wow I actually kind of like this guy <laughs> I, I had no idea I never thought I would in a million years and I just now he's wonderful and he's perfect but I didn't you know I was like oh I don't want to do another call ah. <laughs> how was, soon before um he sent a dick pic how soon or how how late man <laughs> I think I had to ask for one wow old-fashioned yo well he's a gentleman yeah right <laughs> it's funny because when we <laughs> Before we were, like, officially boyfriend and girlfriend, we were on a lunch date, and um, I said something about, like, naked pics, and he said, um, I don't need a picture of your vagina. That's the encore. I need the premiere. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I like this guy. <laughs> but no, I think I asked him Charming. for one. Yeah, <laughs> I think I asked him for one. He probably was nervous. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit intimidating when it comes to that stuff because I'm a little too honest. Right. And then people are like, she's mean. I can very easily see you as a dominatrix if... You ever have to change your career? I mean, I do a little fl- I do face slap. That's a thing that I do. Dad, you're most. <laughs> I do like to hit. Do you like to be hit, or you just like to be the one doing hitting? Um, I just do like a little little slaps here in the heat of passion. Mm-hmm. You know, a little butt spanking's cool. Like mm-hmm. I like that. Um, maybe a little choking session. I don't know. Whatever you're into. A little right. hair pulling. Dad, earmuffs. 
I just, you know, I feel <laughs> my dad's my biggest fan. He's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, I feel like I'm talking way more. I have so no. many questions I want to ask you. Let, let's forget my 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 relationship. It's good. It's great. Yeah. I do. Fe- I feel bad for female comics, especially when they're new, because if they do something dumb, that's it. That everybody's going to know them for that one dumb thing the whole time. Right. And that's how I feel. I feel bad for new comics now. Mm-hmm. I do. And even if I like them and even if I genuinely want them to succeed, which I do, if you want to do this, I, I'm 100% behind anybody who wants to do this. However, I just can't be associated with it in such a close degree. Yeah. And I know that sounds awful. No. But there are times where I'm like, I just really can't. I can't do it. I can't associate myself with that stuff because I don't want people to think that I'm similar in the ways that I, I mean, myself. I'm sure your way also with that with male comics who you disagree with or oh, absolutely. Who, who you dislike. So it's I'm friendly. I'm very friendly. Like I will talk to anyone if you want to talk to me, but I just get a little weird with stuff and I don't know why. And I think it's just because I want to protect myself and like what I've built for myself, you know, mm-hmm. and if that's weird and I, know, I don't know if that sounds arrogant. It's not arrogant. I feel like a fucking dick right now. No, it's not arrogant at all. I feel Shit. like a dick. <laughs> I feel like a big, fat, juicy dick right now. <laughs> Ugh. I know. Wait, 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 are they? Oh, I hit my soundboard, but it didn't work because you had... Denied! I'm going to be like Josh Spiegel. Don't turn my sound down ever! <laughs> all right, let's yeah, talk about you. Let's damn commercials. I feel... Let's talk about you. I feel about let's do it. Let's do it. I have all these questions for you. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, Um, your favorite place to perform? <sighs> Sidebar will always hold a special yeah. place in my heart. I like that. It'll, but I really love Coco Lane. Isn't that a great room? Yeah, it's a fantastic room. I. It's, it's one of the best. Have you ever done Cellar Door? I haven't. I unfortunately Ryan asked me a few months ago, but that was when two comics, one cup happened. Yeah, and that was a whole total fucking disaster. I should have done Cellar Door, but Cellar Door is <laughs> one of my new favorite rooms of all time. It's small and dark and intimate. And mm-hmm. even if it's a smaller crowd, it feels like a room full of 100 people. That's awesome. And people go there because they are watching comedy. There's nothing else on. There's no TVs on. It's wonderful. Every time I go there, I have such a great time. That's great. I highly recommend it. As soon as you do it, Samantha, mm-hmm. you're going to be like, I love this room. <laughs> yeah, I have to message Ryan. Yeah. See if I can get on. Yeah, hands down. Love that room. I highly recommend that to you. Look at me. Ready? Do that. Mm-hmm. Do that room. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite local comics. Favorite local comics. I have so many friends who I love. I'll yeah. try not to mention people I'm too close to, though, because I don't want to seem. Yeah, but you can be biased. Um, I mean, yeah. if you, if even if even if they're your friends, like whose set lists and jokes are like your favorite? Like who's a really good writer? Well, right to away, I have to say Robert Andrew, just because Robert works a crowd like I've never seen. Mm-hmm. He's he's so charismatic. He can go into a dirty Pasadena white trash bar and get people to bend over laughing, clapping faggotry, cheering it on. Is that a word? (laughs) He's awesome. Like he can um, and like he's one of the first people who really encouraged me, who really who actually talked to me and told me like, you know, you're funny. Keep keep going. He's a nice guy. And I think he had Mm -hmm. also similar um, rough patches and rough times and Mm -hmm. wanted to do stand up to find this outlet of like dealing with issues and other things yes and i really do think that yeah absolutely and he's a good kid he's so nice he is he's so nice and a lot of people you know like and i'm i respect him so much because he's so close to margaret joe but he doesn't use her as a gateway to get successful or famous like a lot of people might try right i think he genuinely loves the friendships with everyone in his life like i think he genuinely values people who are close to him and he, I don't think he has, like, a, a, an exploiting bone in his body. Yeah, and he's always like, if I ever make it, honey, I'm taking you with me. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> You're and like, I wasn't worried, awesome. but thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> and I love Michelle Belinky, like you said, one of my favorite female yeah. stand-ups in this area. She's um, good. She's smart. She is. She's very smart. Super smart. And she could be dirty, though, and she's a good combination of both. I know. I think it's funny that she, when she mm-hmm. gets dirty, because you're just like, oh, look at this cute little... <laughs> she has, like, an element or something, and it's, like, mm-hmm. her necklace, or I don't know. Like a, <laughs> and she always wears these cute little dresses and stuff. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know. She she's actually... It's funny, because she was on Petey Steele's podcast talking about girls that were a short skirt and heels and i was like if she's talking about me i am gonna write this down so when she's on my couch oh uh, yeah you'll bring it up oh i'm totally bringing it up i would i would love to hear te- <laughs> message, yeah because it's funny is because she on the calendar <laughs> yes she is <laughs> awesome. um no i like her but i was i'm curious i was like man if she's talking because i do dress up like i dress to the nines I, i've had personal conversations with her i know who she's talking about you haven't been mentioned i can 
I oh, okay. I can well, say. I was nervous because I yeah. do wear like fucking whore heels and tight, <laughs> tight little dresses mm-hmm. and skirts. And it's like not because I don't have a figure to show off. Like I have right. a fucking little chunky female body with eight cups. Eh? No, no, no. Not Here, at all. Yeah, but here's the thing. I do it because I, I it's a business and I want to dress up. Absolutely. And I, I, I like that people are like, oh, what is this girl going to say with the big fucking shoes well. on? So they have the big shoes on and then I come out and I'm like, I got jokes. You yeah. Know? I get, mm. But as she said that and I was like, oh, well, I can't wait to ask her about that. <laughs> but still bring it up when you talk to her. I yeah. Uh, to let's that. do the pen pad game again okay. and tell me, you can tell me who she's talking about. Okay. This is fun. <laughs> Samantha, you're my new best friend. <sighs> Chris even knew it. Chris knew it too. He goes, oh my God, I bet you, you guys become like best friends. <laughs> Cause he knows I that I, he knows that I love you. Like you're my oh. favorite female open micer. Oh, thank you so Everybody much. Everybody knows it though. I, I don't think I'm you, quiet about it. Thank you for calling me an open micer. People give me so much shit about calling myself an open micer, but I am not a fucking comedian. I like that. Not, you, not yet. <laughs> right. And I like that you know that like you still, what have you gotten paid to do a show yet? I did get paid for the dirty show for winning the you, female dirty you, show, but yeah, and you won the money. Yeah, right, I, I won it, it but somebody, I haven't gotten. I mean, Dave, I'm supposed to get a feature or something, and right. I might get a little Which, chunk of change. Right, well, and you we'll should, see. and you absolutely should. But I'm just saying, like, yes, I like that you but call yeah. yourself an open micer. I mean, I don't think. God, I don't even know if I ever. I don't even know when I changed comedian and on my, on my Facebook page. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That sounds weird because right. you never want to overstep your boundaries. And some people are like, well, you know, if that's what you feel in your heart, it, what are you yeah. doing this for if you don't call yourself a, a comedian? Right. But I'm like, you know, oh, I, I do stand up because that implies that I could fall down. Right. <laughs> right. You know? God, you're so cute. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's fucking Eat true. your little face off. <laughs> um, hold on. There was, there was another one. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. Write that shit down. This stays in here and on the airwaves. <laughs> we need a bigger pad. That's what, that's what she said. Um, these uh, are heavy flow day. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, this person at the bottom is the one I was referring to earlier. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll talk about that off the air. Yeah. <laughs> I have a personal story to tell, too. Oh, my God. We'll, we'll tell perfect. it off the air. We'll tell perfect. it off the air. Perfect. <laughs> I just had a run-in with this situation. Oh, the after show. <laughs> yeah. I had a run-in with this situation today. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm so busy. Can you please stop bothering me with crap that this dumb fucking broad does? I can't deal with it. And I immediately was like, you know what I mean? I'm like, stop. I don't care. Stop it. Stop it busy. Got to feed my dog. <laughs> Um, okay, so favorite local comics, Robert um, and I'll, Michelle. Okay, um, I love Dark Mark, too. He hosts the sidebar. He's the yeah. f- first person who ever became my friend in stand-up. He rode me home the first night that I ever did stand-up um, in his taxi. Don't He's, you like the camaraderie that's built between yes. comics that genuinely want you to do well? And it was so fun. Like, I, I indulge in 420, so does he. Um, yeah. and there was that's another thing. Everybody's into that. Yeah. I can't, I can't do it. No, I'm going yeah. to get you high one night. No, I, I, like, I liked the way it felt, <laughs> but I get so first of all i'm already always hungry right and that just exacerbated <laughs> i can't i don't want to do anything else while i'm high but eat everything in the house right i don't like that i don't like that one bit <laughs> yeah don't worry brownies if, if you don't like to smoke brownies just just one night you can you can handle it i mean if you want I don't me think to they but i'm letting you know rock. they don't and i you know what's really funny is that if they did it, i'd be upset because i don't get paid yeah i'm an intern <laughs> So <laughs> I just tell you right. I'm like, oh, I'm just a fucking intern. I'm nobody cool there. But yeah, about the camaraderie. One um, time, Dark Mark and I were indulging in his um, cab, and there was another black comic, um, Show Off, or his real name is Jason, whatever they called him, Show Off. Very cool. And we we were high, and he turned back and he looked at me, and he started to laugh. And he's like, "Did you ever think you'd be hanging out with two motherfuckers like us?" Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "No." To be honest, yeah, I never thought I would. I would have been like, it, actually, it was incredible. actually, this morning, <laughs> I was with two random black dudes smoking yeah. weed. This is exactly how my life goes. Yeah, exactly. You're the one that's judging me based on my appearance. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was stoned, but oh, and um, a personal favorite who I don't know that well, but I really, I, I love Bill Monahan. Isn't he wonderful? Yeah, he's, he's amazing. Oh, I look at Bill so Monahan and I'm like, if Bill Monahan isn't nationally known. There's no hope for anyone There's else. There's no hope for anybody. I'm going to just <laughs> tell jokes in my shower. Yeah. <laughs> to my Garnier Fructis bottle. Um, Eric Woodworth and I sat in the back of Auto Bar and talked about that. And he, Eric openly said, like, God, Bill Monaghan tells jokes that I wish I could write. Like, exactly. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Bill Monaghan. And the best part about him is that he looks like your science teacher. Right. You know, like, and he just right? comes up and says the filthiest. You're like, tell me more about the things. nucleus. <laughs> um, tell us about your dark and blue comedy. Like, have you ever thought... 
man, I should probably tell a joke that's a little more refreshing. I have thought that. Um, and talking about Dark Mark again, he's coached me before and been like, man, he's like, you get up there and you just fucking make people miserable. You just fucking. I'm not making them miserable. They're touching into their own their own <laughs> <Right>. shit. <laughs> I'm just opening all their already existing wounds. Exactly. <laughs> Dark Mark. <God. laughs> I know. And his name is Dark Mark. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I try going back to the clean, you know, humor. But I told you my heroes, as far as comedy goes, Doug Stanhope. Yeah. Bill Hicks. Dark people. Dark people. Not just black people. <laughs> and I just, uh, people. <laughs> people. Look I have at to specify for my dad. He's old right. school. He's old school. Okay. So is my father. So oh, is yeah. my father. Yeah. yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> Um, and he, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I, I just don't find happy, refreshing things funny. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. You're just like, fuck Yankee Candle. Yeah. Fuck yeah. them. Yeah. Fuck Yankee Candle. I need a torch. <laughs> All right. That's how I see things in the dark. <laughs> My parents both have dark senses of humor too. So, um, I, I think that has Are a lot your parents to still together? It. No, they're not. Okay. Um, yeah. do you think a lot of it stems from the bullying or, I mean, are you like... Are you an only sub, only child? I am an only child. Um, okay. A lot of it stem, stems from the fact that, I mean, I don't like to get too stereotypical. Even a lot of, but I do have Stereotypes a Stereotypes are there for a reason. They are. I do have a Jewish mother. She likes to guilt trip a lot. She's mm, very dramatic. Excellent. But she has a cutting, sarcastic sense of humor. My mom can take the truth and make it fucking hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so I grew up with that over my head a lot. Are you close um, with your mom now? Oh, yeah. We, we've always been close, but man. Close enough that, for her to stab you? I like my, have the most passionate relationship yeah. of my entire life with my mother. Like, it is a love-hate relationship yeah. in every sense of the word. I mean, at least you acknowledge um, it. Yeah. Instead uh, of you she's being one like, of my why biggest do you hate supporters. Me, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, my mother, she looked at me uh, throughout my childhood. She'd be like, I should have had a third abortion. No you way. You know, yeah, shit like that. Holy so cow. I was desensitized to words at a young age. So words do not bother me. That is impressive. Yeah. And His then add the still bullying. bother me. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> And then with the bullying and shit on top of that, I mean, and my dad, my dad has a very good, my dad has a more positive sense of humor, yeah. you know, but he likes to laugh a lot. You know, he's, he's a very, he's redneck, blue collar, but he's a, a very intelligent sense of humor. Yeah. He, we weren't sitting around the coffee table laughing at like two and a half men. Right. We, we weren't watching shit You're like watching that. like Revenge of the Nerds and shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's me and my dad. That's right. awesome. <laughs> do you live with your dad? Now I do. Um, I moved out for like a year uh live with a roommate but i was too broke to afford it okay so, so. Where, do, where do you guys live now we live in um, a white trash ghetto in brooklyn park brooklyn park okay um yep. how far away was that because how long was your ride up here um like 45 minutes not too bad i feel terrible that's do I'm not so feel sorry i'm so happy to be here i'm so sorry <laughs> you have no idea i invited you to narnia for a fucking <laughs> podcast um, i fucking love narnia yeah i've never been mm-hmm. but i hear it's nice <laughs> um apparently you have <laughs> <laughs> by the way we're gonna skin you there, uh, we have a well outside <laughs> is am i gonna meet jesus lion um, um yes mm-hmm. and i hope you have lotion because mm-hmm. we ran out <laughs> when we skin the other girl <laughs> listen i don't know where my line goes i'm retarded um <laughs> so you're where does your mom live my mom lives in columbia okay columbia. she remarried any of your parents remarried? she remarried <laughs> um she put an ad out on craigslist my mom is a craigslist whore by the way she still is like whore like sleeps with dudes off Craigslist? Yeah, all the time. Um, she put an ad out looking for... I just for, air fived uh, your mom in my head. <laughs> she put an ad out looking for a 420 friend. Uh-huh. She met this man named Joel. They smoked weed in his truck. And then they went to a Chinese restaurant. And they've been together for about a year and a, almost two years. Um, but they got married last year. Do you write jokes about your mom? I do sometimes. They're very mean, though. Does your mom, <laughs> does your mom ever heard any of these jokes? Not too many of them. Not too many that are genuinely mean. Like do I you, just, do I did you, this one joke of where a Luke Marshall who used to run sidebar saw my mom once, and he came up to me and he's like, you know, yeah, you know, you're, she's a very handsome woman. And I went up on stage once wow. and I was like, Luke Marshall called my mother a handsome woman. When you're a handsome woman, that just means you're an ugly man. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> What'd your mom say? <laughs> no she didn't hear it oh okay oh my god just shit like that um that's crazy but my, the funny part about my mom's hey relationship no. <laughs> with her new husband is he used to be a butler a legit butler oh my god do you watch episodes of like mr <laughs> belvedere in the background and you're like hey is this bringing you back memories are you having flashbacks <laughs> we do not <laughs> but you should we should we totally should any scene where alfred is there 
or, <laughs> you know, um, even Charles in charge. That's kind of <laughs> like a butler. Exactly. Butler and a babysitter. I mean, right, when you when you hear it, like, it's such an intriguing thing. When, yeah. When you, it's, it's an uncommon profession. That's so funny. And my mom. Do you the, call him Lurch? No, I, my boyfriend came up with the nickname Step Butler. So Step that, Butler. that's what I call him now. That's impressive. Um, and he's very tidy, very neat. He loves to cook and clean. My mom is a messy stoner hoarder. Yeah, I thought you were so, gonna stop at the whore part, and I was like, "Whoa!" No, a messy stoner. But she said hoarder, hoarder whore, Craig's hoarder Craig, whore, Craigslist whore. Hoard. She's Let a whore dash Durr. door. My mom, okay, and she's never gonna listen to this shit, so I don't give a fuck. My mom made Thanks. me. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so sorry. She's <laughs> never gonna listen to this shit. <laughs> I love you, Wendy. She's not gonna listen. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> She made me lie once while, while she was married. What's the matter with you? <laughs> and he's obsessed with the soundboard now. She made me lie once when I was going to Coco Lane. She's like, if Joel asks, tell him I went and saw you at Coco Lane. And I what? was like, why? Uh-oh. I'm like, you're not just going to Wegmans. Like, <laughs> your grocery what was shopping. she doing? And she went on a date. She went Even though date. she's remarried to this guy. Yes. Samantha, I fear for your future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not even the half of all of the dysfunctional shit that yeah so basically don't, this is why this is why i'm sitting on this couch now I almost, this is how i got here i don't want to end this podcast at all <laughs> i just want to keep going uh, i'm good with that this is this is the best stuff <laughs> yeah all this is very raw very real time. like i told you I'm, I'm really not afraid of saying and that things. i mean it doesn't bother you a little bit or are you just like do you ever say like mom seriously I need you to lock that shit up. Oh, I, I do all the time. But to be fair, he doesn't put out for her. She's, And I'd rather her to get laid. To be fair, he doesn't put out. Do you ask him? Or are you like, listen, Step Butler? My mom says that she's not getting enough yeah. sweet naked time. Right. You know what I mean? Like, do you, what, what is his side? His side? You don't know. You don't know. He could want to put out. And she's like, I don't know. I'm tired. His of side is that he has back problems. And he just rather touch himself watching teen porn. That's oh, that side. is the wrongest thing. That's, I've ever that's, that's his side. I know. I was so awkward. I, I've, um, we watched Netflix on his computer and um, a X hamster tab was up there. It was like, oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> okay. amazing. Like, yeah, he said he'd rather, he'd rather jerk off than bang his wife. Yeah, then bang my mother. That that's kind of, that suppresses me. I, I mean, what even if, even if he has <laughs> back problems, why can't he just you know not do the work? Just right. let her be on top or whatever. Right. This is your that's crazy. It is. So is your mom just sticking it out? Like what? No, I mean she's she's trolling Craigslist for dick. I mean regularly. I get. <laughs> <laughs> she's trolling Craigslist for dick. God, she sounds like my mom. And the problem, I, uh, the sad. You know what the saddest part of it is. She, she doesn't get past like the there's first a sad date. part to that story she that's doesn't not... get past the first date she doesn't even get like a one night stand they meet her they talk to her for five minutes they say they're going to the bathroom and they leave like this... that's <laughs> i need you to do me a favor before you even establish a comedy career i need yeah. you to write a fucking book <laughs> like stat really yeah it's really that interesting like, are you fucking the, the, nuts yes <laughs> here's the thing even if that's how half the people's lives are in the comedy scene no mm-hmm. one's that open about it no one's gonna right. fucking say like well my mom's a fucking whore and nobody <laughs> likes talking to her right i mean she trolls craigslist for dick like and nobody says that being honest they say yeah. it as a joke you know they actually have mothers at home that, like bake cookies and shit and they're fucking loving and they're like i don't know why he tells these dirty jokes yeah and i know he, why my yeah. parents can't not say they knew where it came from wow they can't make that, that claim is impressive <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day of my life oh my wanna, god this is the best day of my that. life it can't be it can't be because this is the best day of my life and that's just impossible that you have the best day my face hurts wow <laughs> so does sam's uh, mom apparently yeah <laughs> so or uh, do you work i do work where do you work <laughs> um i work at morningside house assisted living with dementia residents man this can't even <laughs> write itself <laughs> <laughs> This is an interviewer's <laughs> dream. <laughs> How many times have you cut yourself today? <laughs> I just feel like that should be a follow-up question. This is the best day. Um, Only I was shaving my pubes. Yes. Mm-hmm. I get the bumpies. I just, mm-hmm. you know, I try hard not yeah, to. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. I get the bumpies too. And I have a large mound, so it looks <laughs> awkward. It makes it even worse. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my God! This is the blue part you were talking about, right? <laughs> what did I tell you? What did I tell you? You did. I, w- I warned him Absolutely too. Absolutely did. 
I was like, look, she's misunderstood. She's so dark and twisty that Nip people get uncomfortable in instead of appreciating how honest it is. Did I yep. not fucking say that? <laughs> Thank you. Yep. That. Yep. I yep. said that yep. out loud. Yep. I fucking meant it. Look, I meant it. <laughs> Proof is in the pudding. I'm st- I'm still not offended. <laughs> as long oh as it's not God. Cosby pudding, but I'm Oh, trust me. It's Cosby <laughs> pudding. There's a lot of rape in your story. Can you lay off that soundboard? <laughs> God damn it. Um, all right. Since we're talking since we were talking about local comics mm-hmm. and um the ones that Bill's not that get have the negative <laughs> stigmas. Uh, yes. What are your feelings on Chris Restivo? <sighs> My feelings on Chris Restivo. Yeah. yeah. What are your feelings on that? He's always been incredibly sweet when I've talked to him. Yeah, I agree with that. And it makes me feel bad because of what a genuinely nice person he is. Yes. He seems like someone who is just trying to fit in and who is completely oblivious to the fact that he's just not a person that fits in. I know. And I and instead of owning it. Yeah. He just becomes a laughing stock, and it, it makes me sad. I agree with you. I've definitely had an issue with it. <laughs> I've had an issue with it a little bit since the beginning. I kind of yeah. got it. I was like, all right, whatever. They're patronizing him a mm-hmm. little bit. And then it, now it's it just, it's so potent. It's everywhere. Right. And he is like, oh, the haters, you know. He's making all these Facebook posts about haters and stuff. And it's like, oh, my God, I can't. Like, I can't. You hurt me. Reading that hurts me. Right. And it's sad. <sighs> I feel bad because I do feel like. I don't know if he listens. If he does, he's probably mm-hmm. going to hate me after this. But I do feel like, you know, not all there, I feel like, you know. And I just do feel like people are taking advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, it is kind of like bullying the kid with Down syndrome. Okay, and I that's... was being nice. And she just <laughs> fucking... Hey, <laughs> no. I unfollowed him. <laughs> this is amazing. It's like I'm being so PC. Mm-hmm. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> To not make Cut an enemy. Cut that shit out. I know. <laughs> no. I'm trying so hard and to not what? make an enemy. And she's like, that yeah. so not you. Chris, if, if you're listening to this, I do love you so much as a person. I He's I a do. nice kid. You are nice. And I think you are funny. I think you're funny. But you have to acknowledge, you have to step back and realize that people are making fun of you. Yeah, but he, that, motiv- that motivates mm-hmm. him. Right. People are he, he laughing with all, you. They're laughing right, at and you. They, he thinks they're just all haters, and that right. it, it motivates him to want to do more. But the people who he thinks support him and are behind him are fucking laughing at him, too. Right. I agree with you, except for um, Eric Woodward, because Eric said oh, yeah, he's, I, like, Eric is he's like the Rudy of Coco Lane. Like, mm-hmm. everybody just keeps rooting for him, you know, and everybody's behind him, like, hoping that... And you know what? I, I secretly hope and pray that this is all just an elaborate Andy Kaufman esque alternative here's comedy the stunt. Uh, here's you the did thing. Not just go there. Yeah, but here's <laughs> the thing. If that happens, God bless her. If that happens, he's going to be the most brilliant fucking local yeah, comedian I, of all time. I would. I would. That, if that he comes shit back goes to down. life. If that shit goes down, if that actually happens, we're all fucking idiots. We are. I hope that that happens. I, I wow. hope that's true. Man. But, I mean, Chris, I believe in you. I honestly do. If, if you're listening at all, I believe in you. I think you're funny, but you have to change up your act. I don't know how you haven't got picked up to be someone's co-host on a podcast yet. <laughs> I'm fucking dead serious right now. I help out with this show, local show called The Bottom Feeders, um, but I'm not, like, on too much. I'll, I'll chime in every now and again. Yeah, I'm going to have you I, as I a don't. recurring guest here. Yes! <laughs> I'm oh my sorry. God. I first of all, nobody <laughs> puts me you, at Wendy. a loss for words. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I keep looking over at Michael like, is this happening? <laughs> I love you, Wendy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, love you. Okay, <laughs> love everything about you. <laughs> and uh, I don't even need to say stuff because you just go ahead and do it for me. Oh yeah. And in a really aggressive, direct manner. Because you know what, you actually have a future. I have nowhere to go. That's fucking I never, crazy. I have nowhere is, to go. That is the most inaccurate in the, in the DMV comedy scene. That I, is the most inaccurate, inaccurate thing you've said the entire time you've been here. Because you're you. definitely fucking doing something. You're going somewhere, and oh, you don't change you. yourself to do it either. Don't thank be that you. fucking guy. Uh, status is about eating a dick. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Thank you, you. You legitimately are like, oh, you know, oh, comedy. You mm-hmm. know, I've missed you. I just you, you <laughs> ate a fucking bag of dicks on stage, and you're just I you did. love it. I do. I, I love every minute of it. You love these humbling experiences. And I mean, that's being polite, a humbling experience. I'm the type of person where I go somewhere and, you know, if I had an, a nice, enjoyable time, met cool people, you know, I'm like, OK, well, that was fucking boring. You know, yeah. I love it when things go wrong. Yeah. I love it when shit is horrible, when you get the worst service, just, when you meet the rudest people. More comedy. <laughs> exactly. It's 
it just I'm like oh now I have a story to tell that, that's what I want my life to be. I just want my life to be a series. I've of just decided that we're going to hang out more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't even have any time, but I'm going to make time. You're going to be, com- you're going to come on date night with thank me and you. Chris. Oh my God. I'd love to. He even I said it. He goes, I know it. You guys are going to hang out. I know it. <laughs> uh, he's like, he's like, you just love her so much. And he's like, I just know it. You guys are going to become BFFs. Oh my God. I, I need more female friends, especially awesome people like you. That's, I, that's I didn't know Missy um Gr- Grankowitz mm-hmm. I didn't know her very well and I met her at Myth and Moonshine and you would have thought that we were like lost kindred spirits oh. and I was like I love you so much <laughs> I don't I've only seen her she once is awesome. but yeah. I love her Facebook statuses yes She's great. Yep, yep. we She's I don't so know what funny. happened I thought she was gonna be like cookie cutter mom teacher-esque no mm-hmm. not she at was all. so <laughs> undercutting and I was like god I fucking love you <laughs> and we both were just like yeah yeah I feel the same way I think she's getting her own reality show or yeah something she's actually a big effing deal where she's from yeah she's got way more twitter followers than any any, any one of us <laughs> you know what I mean she's like got a cd she's got a comedy cd wow she's been in the paper she headlined Sean and she's fucking awesome she could do shit. like a one-man show for an hour and a half and not give a shit <laughs> meanwhile I've taken four shits and I can't do it <laughs> that's crazy yeah Fuck. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Even Chris was like, he called it. He called it for both, both chicks. <laughs> that's awesome. Stop now, get out of my head, the board. <laughs> um, you guys are perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of, not really. <laughs> I mean, we are perfect because we're imperfect, though, if that makes any sense. <laughs> um, all right, let me scratch that out. This fucking pen isn't working. Um, least favorite thing about the comedy scene and doing stand-up? What's your least favorite thing about in it? In Baltimore or just in general? A- at all. Like, what, what's the one thing you can do without? Like, I could do without that. Just fucking, what is that one thing that, like, bother you? Like, what's your biggest pet peeve? Like, man, I can do without that. My biggest pet peeve. <sighs> I have to think about this for a minute. That's fine. Take your time. I can. Shitty audiences, shitty crowds, people yeah. that aren't there for comedy. Okay, so is that, like, a um like a bar scene thing where they're just, like, going to have dinner and drinks and, like, crap, there's a comedy show. Right. Yeah. Right. That, or just people who are there just for their friends. And then they and leave after the yeah. friend goes And that, like what I you were saying, that. people who don't stay. I mean, obviously you can't stay all the time, but people who don't support other comedians also. People I can't who, stand that. If you It come, happens a lot. Yeah. And you come and everybody sits and watches you. Ten comics later, that tenth comic's not getting the same respect that you were getting. Exactly. That's the hardest part about and why are you outside fucking here? smoking? Yeah. I need you back in here. Sit your goddamn ass down because we had to sit through your shit. Exactly. Right. And I mean, it's hard because one of the best things about doing open mics is networking, connecting, yep. talking to other comics, but try to save that shit for after the show. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe like on a trip to the bathroom, maybe to get a drink, but seriously, the whole time. It's so bad. I have actually had people like come up to me and say like, oh, yeah, you did a great job tonight. I'm like, thanks. I wasn't on. But thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> That's the worst. You know, it, and I mean, well, I guess they were trying to compliment me and be you nice did, for once. Yeah. You did a Glad great job talking watching. To me. Yeah. <laughs> you did a great job tonight while I was doing a line of coke in the bathroom. <laughs> and it's understandable because like you were talking about um, before the show started, I think it is nerve wracking before you go up. You want to repeat things in your head. Yeah. You want to make sure you're going to remember everything. You're focused on yourself. But especially if you take it mm-hmm. seriously. You mean, you're like, you're like, crap. I hope this goes well. I hope that new joke goes well. Or I hope I think of that second punchline you know it's it's constantly like a brain and, i mean and i love hanging out with comics like i can't have maintain relationships with normal people anymore because yeah. like comics are just so comics are way more colorful and entertaining but i hate it when i'm talking to someone and they're obviously trying a bit out on me without even like forewarning me okay this is a new bit i'm working on what yeah. do you think do you, you just try that? to bring it up i mean sometimes i do sometimes i would say is that a, is that a shti- are we doing shtick sometimes is that a it's bit a little douchey because people are just so like self-centered you yeah. know in, in comedy i mean we all have to have extremely large egos in order to even get up there and do it in the first place yeah you know but it's, i think that we are <laughs> the most insecure people with extremely large egos we are yeah because we're constantly picking ourselves apart oh yeah and everything in our oh, life yeah. apart Oh, thank you. Yes. And we're gleaning it for other people to laugh at. How sick is that? <laughs> it's sick, but it's amazing. <laughs> you won't know the sickness that makes me feel good. <laughs> you won't know. <laughs> All your clients will, though. Right. <laughs> at your insane asylum. <laughs> and your dementia ward. Yeah, my dementia ward. Yep. Um, Are you on Instagram? I don't have an Instagram. Yeah, I don't do it. <laughs> I was going to be like, maybe I should, but. I just converted mm-hmm. last week and I. I regret it immensely. Are you immediately addicted? No, I just don't like it. It's stupid. It's like nothing but pictures. You can't make a post without a picture. Mm. And it's like, what am I taking pictures of? Like, what do you want to say? This is stupid. Right. Your dinner. Yeah, and I took a picture of an empty plate. And I was like, am I doing this right? <laughs> I just don't. Your your dog sleeping. I just feel like social media saturates everything. And it's like, I don't need another one. 
<laughs> I don't. And I don't like it. It's too loud and crowded. And there's like, it's a hashtag fucking war. You have to hashtag every word. And I'm like, I already hashtag like on Twitter. Right. One or two words. And that's enough. Right. <laughs> don't you find it annoying? I don't know. I don't know if you've ever done a joke like this. And I mean, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Lately, people have been adding um tag like hashtag da 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 as, yeah. as their. <laughs> yeah. It just makes, I've heard it so much. I don't yeah. Know. I want somebody to go pound <laughs> sign da da da. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> that will make me chuckle. Right. If somebody's like, pound sign, blessed. Pound sign, prayers. <laughs> I'd be like, ha, 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 I get that. <laughs> That'd be funny to mm-hmm. me. Tic-tac-toe board, blessed. <laughs> Tic-tac-toe board, prayers. <laughs> like, that would be funny to me. I'd be yeah. like, ha, 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 I get that. Right. But if you're like, hashtag prayers, hashtag blessed. Maybe someone will do that just for you. They well, now they're audience. stealing it if they do it. Oh. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> so that's part about having a microphone. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Um, personal things here. Hashtag. Okay. <laughs> Tic Tac Toe Board. <laughs> uh, your new boyfriend. How long have you guys been together? We've been together since June. And what is his name? His name is Charles. Charles Wolf. Charles Wolf. <laughs> and how did you guys meet? We met like all uh insecure uh fat people through an online dating site. I'm gonna need you um, to omit that middle part because <laughs> you make it sound way worse. <laughs> I know tons of people that met on dating sites. Oh, yeah. I mean, I know. It's it's like funny to joke about. <laughs> well, on OkCupid. You're so self-deprecating. OkCupid specifically. <laughs> you are so self-deprecating. It's funny. <laughs> Thank You're you. You're just like, huh. Oh, I'm fucking yeah. insecure fat people. Yeah. 103.22. Got oh. it. <laughs> oh. What did I make? What happened? You did said edit, so I was going to. Never mind. Oh, omit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Michael's going to be like, oh, can you cuss that out a little bit, <laughs> Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> so, yeah, go on. Uh, we went through okay Cupid. Our first date was at Denny's. I was the one that suggested Denny's. Um, <laughs> did he make a suggestion prior to Denny's? No, I guess he was just so scared and he wanted to be, like, agreeable, you know. And he and was like, she wants to go to Denny's. Yeah. And the, was the, he immediately like, this is my kind of broad or was he like, I don't mm, know what the fuck I'm getting into? He was like, I don't know what the fuck I'm getting into because yeah. he's a major foodie. He likes, like, high class high yeah. quality shit and he's like oh i love that qu- quinoa burgers <laughs> with the avocado <laughs> oh and the mango salsa and it was so funny because um i don't drive my dad had to drive me here yeah why don't you drive is that um i get panic attacks and really bad anxiety when i drive really comedy it's always something do you um <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you gilda radner <laughs> I... okay do what about medication what about like xanax or anxiety meds i don't i've been thinking about getting on um, anti-anxiety or you know yeah antidepressants but i mean definitely not antidepressants because your jokes won't be as funny <laughs> but uh, I, th- I think An- anti-anxiety yeah anxiety anxiety, stuff so yeah. i mean you can like do normal functioning things like drive a car right that's that's true i, I have been thinking about it yeah um, i mean i'm not saying like whatever fucking get rides if you want to like i wish right. i had a driver i, I might have something <laughs> i hate driving i hate yeah it. no totally but, yeah <laughs> i mean don't you say like do you feel it f- hinders my comedy a lot because I can't. Dr- I would do a lot more shows and a right. lot more things if I if, right, if right, I could. Right. I'd travel outside of Maryland even if I could uh, frequently. But yeah, yeah. and I uh, Charles, you know, he's very supportive. He drops me off, takes me to a lot of places. But yeah, that's you know. a good dude. I mean, he meets you and he's like, all right, she wants to go to Denny's and she doesn't drive. <laughs> the funny part is, my dad is super racist. Um, and um, outside well, he's of not black, I don't. know What's happening here? <laughs> and outside of Denny's. There was a black guy with dreadlocks standing there. I'm like, oh, look, Dad, there's my date. Oh, my God, awesome. And, and, and he flipped out. <laughs> so <Did> that, <laughs> and then I was like, just kidding. That's awesome. Yeah. What did he say? My dad? Yeah. He was just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. No. <laughs> he was like, didn't you see a picture of that guy first? <laughs> and I'm like. <laughs> You're like, no, I totally did. I'm like, Dad, you moved me to Brooklyn Park where every white woman has a biracial baby. Yeah, I mean, you're like, black look. dick is just going to slip into me eventually. Yeah, you should be like, look, Dad, I'm going to get us some serious welfare money, okay? <laughs> I'm going to get us food for free in this joint. I'm going to have some kids, okay? I'm going to pop these bad boys out. God, we're racist as fuck right now. The only person laughing is my dad and your dad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we we love only, our dads. The only two people laughing. Um... <laughs> All right, Charles Wolf. How does he feel about you doing the stand-ups? He's very supportive. Um, he's Is very he upset su- that you're funnier than him? <laughs> I'm not funnier than him, actually. I don't fucking believe that. For one <laughs> second. It's I'm sorry, Charles, but I don't. <laughs> He has a very sarcastic sense of humor. I love that. Um, yeah, he is. And it's funny because even when we're not trying to be funny or we have great chemistry, I'm yeah. the zany one and he's the straight man. Yeah. 
and I it like works. That. It works in all aspects of our relationship. I need to get the both of you on the microphone. Totally. Yeah. He does. He does some Toast. things to say. <laughs> I need. To, I need that to happen in front of my face hole. <laughs> Um, oh. I know, seriously. He does a lot of things involving my face hole, so. Yeah, we fucking knew that. Yeah. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ooh, don't worry. <laughs> don't Ew. worry, Samantha's dad. He's white. <laughs> um, What does he do for a living? He, do you know that there's like an online school for kids like me who got bullied or have problems or just want to be homeschooled? Okay, Like yeah. K to 12. Um, He just does IT work for them, the call center. Did he go to school to do learn how to do all the computer weirdo stuff? Uh, he's like me, like he kind of like dropped out of college and stuff. So yeah, so but, but he's making a decent living for someone without a degree. He really is. Good, mm-hmm. good, good, good. I like you guys already. Yeah. You guys are adorable. I want to pinch cheek. I I wouldn't want to date someone that had a lot of money. I well, that's just silly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> it would just it would it would just make me feel I don't know too insecure or um. Well, you need to get a little more comfortable in your yeah. own skin first, <laughs> and then and then you can be like me, and I'm like, well, what kind of BMW are we getting? <laughs> Just kidding. I fucking work 18 jobs, okay? <laughs> uh, I mean, granted, I want for nothing. How I've, do you have time for this? I love this. I make time for it. That's awesome. Tuesday is my day off of work when it's really not a day off of work. I, I still have 9, 8 Rock on Tuesday morning. I do the podcast and I do a live radio shift at school. Wow. Yeah. On top of whatever show afterwards on a Tuesday or driving down to my boyfriend's house to be a good girlfriend and have date night. <laughs> Very nice. Um, Yes, but no, seriously, like, I want for nothing. Chris treats me extremely well. Super generous. I just definitely work so often. I feel like one day I need this to be so lucrative that I could just stop <laughs> stressing the fuck out, breaking out like a teenager, and, you know, get some sleep, some normal fucking sleep. Right. And you're just like, I don't want somebody with money. I'm like, I, <laughs> I'm like, I desire you to. But you want to make your own money, though. That, that's what's great about you. You want. True. I you're actually working never. working hard to make your own this money. This is the first boyfriend I've ever had that's been totally comfortable just being like, no, I got it. No, let me mm-hmm. pay for that. No, let me pay for that. Oh, no, babe, I already got your vodka. Oh, no, babe, I already got the movie. And I'm like, oh, wow. You're so cute. And pinch your little cheeky. <laughs> Isn't it nice to be pampered? Yeah. And I do this <laughs> face, too. I'm like, thank you for buying the vodka and buying the movie and buying my sushi and my back rubs. <laughs> He's just a nice guy. This is my dad calling in the middle of the show. Excuse me. Oh, hang on. Fuck. Hold, please. Let's put him on speaker. <laughs> uh, yes, Dad. Dad. What? Yeah. Yeah. I'm watching your show. Yeah, you're on it right now, fucker. <laughs> what do you want? I mean, it's a live feed. Oh, fuck. <laughs> hi, Mr. Townsend. Yes, yeah, Samantha says hi. <laughs> yes, Dad. I'll give him a number next time. Yeah, what's up? Sir, turn down your radio, sir. <laughs> uh, if you're going to your boyfriend's house tonight, please slow down. Why, how many speed pass tickets do I have there? <laughs> I'm asking you how many tickets I have there. Stop running the red lights. <laughs> yeah, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How many speed pass tickets do I have there? I've had plenty, but there's only one at the house. That's good, right? Yeah, for now. Oh, Dad. But don't get any more, all right? Yeah, okay. I'll talk to you later, babe. Love Uh, you. Love you. Bye. Bye. He goes, I'm watching your show. (laughs) He mentioned nothing about Black Dick. You clearly know (laughs) that I'm doing the show. If it's a live feed, we are so giving him a number. <laughs> he can call dad, it any time. Dad, what are you doing, man? Oh, uh, let me call. Your she's dad she's live. Has the best accent. It's just like my dad's at Balmore's. You know, you oh, better yeah. watch where you're going. Yeah, hon. You're giving the money to the <laughs> Montgomery County government, <laughs> hon. When you go to your boyfriend's house, meanwhile, I doesn't know his name. I bet. When you go to your boyfriend's house. You better slow down. Oh, does he like Chris? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he does. They met like twice. Oh, okay. It's yeah. so funny. The first time they met, they were both pretty toasty, and I was like, "Chris, you can't, you're, you can't be drunk with my dad." And he goes, "I'm pretty sure your dad's drunk too." 
<laughs> I was like, that's besides the point. <laughs> this is his house. <laughs> so funny. Do you think it's... I don't mean to go off the rails here. But um, do you, um, there are no rails. Uh, You're good. Do you think it's true that men seek out... I mean, women seek out men who remind them of their fathers at all? If that's true, then I've nailed the fucking head here. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that's that's why I asked that. Yeah. I've heard that. Yeah. 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 And if... I've seen it. Electric complex. Yeah. Yeah. I hope it's not the <laughs> other way around, though. Oh. What? Bird. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. I was a... I don't know what just happened there. I blocked You'll out. Like, admit that. I blocked... <laughs> yes. <it's laughs> uh... Uh, yeah, I got it. Uh-huh. <laughs> scratchy, scratch, scratch. Um, so do you have a Twitter? You just got a Twitter. I just got a Twitter. Okay. One it, update. Yes, you have one post we saw. <laughs> we talked about that before you got here. We do a lot of stalking I, for the mm-hmm. show before. Um, That's good. One more thing I want to talk about before we get we skiddly do, because we got to get you down to Myth and Moonshine so you can make the audiences uncomfortable. <laughs> um, let's talk about this Bellissimo situation. Yes. All right. I was booked at a show called Bellissimos. I, they've had two shows. Um, I was booked to do a show, but the guy has made inappropriate comments about two very thin, good-looking, blonde female comedians. Yes. Uh, one of a comedian, one of them a little bit of an open micer. Mm-hmm. Tomato, tomato. And um, it got to a point where I was just tired of being associated with this negative stigma that this man was creating for himself. Mm-hmm. Tell me all of your thoughts and process and what happened and give me your side of that story. I saw the update before it had been deleted yes. from his Facebook. And I thought, ooh. Is the one about Walker or the one about Marcy? The one about Marcy. I okay. do think I saw the one about Walker. As like soon a as I ago. saw that, I messaged her and I said, hey, this is what this guy wrote about you. Mm-hmm. She chatted with me and ended up deleting it. Oh, okay. Right. And he's like, well, I chatted right. with her and she's cool. And I'm like, well, she's probably cool because she's a nice person. Right. But you had to delete a status that you wrote about her. That's That itself is uncool. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Oh, fucking, what do you think it's going to well, we're just we're best friends. <laughs> I just said that I'm going to need a hat when I see her because I'm going to have an erection. Yes. Oh, I forgot that that's what it said. That's mm-hmm. You can't cover that up. When you say you're going to need a hat. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Unintentional pun. Hey, I jaggered it. I jaggered it. I know. Um, <laughs> I jaggered it. That's a saying now, John. <laughs> God, he jaggered himself up and down when he was here. And then Joan <laughs> leans in on the mic. She goes, every fucking day, Wendy. Every day. <laughs> It was, awesome. wonder- it was wonderful. <laughs> Carry on. Um, you can't even be like, oh, I was just complimenting her talent when you fucking say that you need a hat to cover yourself up yeah. when, when she's performing. Yeah. You can't even. Her jokes are so funny that I want to jerk off to them. Is that what you just said? Because <laughs> right. that's fucking weird. That's not how you compliment somebody. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, yeah. But the one about uh, Marcy did. I saw it and it made me very uncomfortable. But I didn't say anything. I was just like, oof, that's a little uncalled for. It's yeah. a little rapey. I didn't say anything about the Marcy one. I didn't say anything publicly about the Walker one. Mm-hmm. I just messaged her privately and said, hey, yeah. this is what's going on. And she checked it out. And you know what? I feel bad about what happened with Marcy because I think she did take it a little bit personally. And I feel really bad. And I'm, I'm yeah. friends with her. I really love her a lot. She's I also she's very great. new. Like and she's, she's not she's used to dealing new. with like creeper statuses like that and i feel bad that someone didn't contact her before the whole trolling shitstorm happened yes the me- i, I want to see how you say she trolling felt. shitstorm i say <laughs> hilarious me more oh it it made my black friday i think that <laughs> <laughs> it made her black friday it did <laughs> um i think that I we all that. i think we all i think we all just had a little little fun with her with her creative and it, w- it had nothing absolutely nothing to do with her it, it was all about that pig bob all yeah. about the, all about that because yeah i, I agree he's with made you. updates about other stand-ups about male stand-ups like danny charnley talking about how hilarious danny charnley is not once did his appearance come into play not in, once in were you like comments. man i'm gonna need a hat to cover my dong yeah. because i love those neck tattoos <laughs> right <laughs> like what the fuck dude who hurt you bob yeah who hurt you bob who hurt you <laughs> it's push it real well <laughs> Um, I definitely, that's like, that's the one joke everybody knows Danny about. So <laughs> exactly. Um, I definitely feel bad because I can tell that he is a nice guy. He's contacted me a couple of times. I just personally, again, this is where I come in. I fucking mm-hmm. look like a bitch. I don't want to be attached to those negative sti- like you stigmas. You don't look like a bitch though. I mean, you, you look, come out looking better because you're standing up behind your beliefs. I, I don't yeah like I here's the thing like I'm not as thin or attractive as those two girls however that's bullshit you first of all <laughs> I just pulled a Samantha just then <laughs> you totally did I self-deprecated like you a motherfucker and I nailed it Jaeger. yeah oh my god this is the best <laughs> day of my life and I 
here's the thing. Like, I get it. Like, to the naked eye, like, these girls are good-looking, skinny little chicks. I right. get it. I get it. But if I do time in your room, it's like I'm just, I feel like I'm just accepting that I'm getting paid by someone who has a really rough time verbally saying that he thinks people are funny. Right. You, he can't just say, hey, you're funny. Mm-hmm. And it's like. And that's what it should be about. Yeah. That's what I got into comedy for. That's why I love comedy. Comedy is a true art form. Yeah. If you're funny, you're funny. It doesn't matter what you look like, how old you are, where you came from. You're. That's all that matters. And the crazy part is, is like, I fucking love hot chicks. I love hot chicks more than the next guy. <laughs> I like I like boobs, mm-hmm. big butts. I like big thighs. I like a pretty girl. I, I would be like, oh my god, that girl's hot as shit. I'm mm-hmm. motor about the shit out of her. <laughs> I do. I mean, girls are attractive, right? Absolutely. I'm comfortable enough to be like, that girl's fucking hot, right? Can we take her home? <laughs> However, I feel like when you're a man, now and you're, I know why Chris treats you to sushi and uh, gives you back rubs. Dude, one wow. time we were at the beach and there was a girl with a <laughs> tattoo all the way down the right side of her leg, and I was like, holy! I was like, oh my god! <laughs> I was like, my cloner is in full effect right now. <laughs> And that is a clip boner, by the way. My cloner. Oh, new um, word. Word of the day. TM. Cloner. And I I <laughs> definitely like think girls are hot and I'm all about it. But it's like you are booking a show and nobody nobody really knows you yet. And you we don't know if you're being funny or if you are just being creepy. Mm-hmm. And it just was it was too much. It became too much. I was like, this is not this is not okay. And he is the reason why there's a stigma against female comics. Oh People yeah. People like him. Oh yeah. He's just going to put you on because he thinks you're Oh, not, well, you're attractive. You. Please do 10 minutes in my room. Mm-hmm. Oh, you've only done one show before? I'll pay you. Right. It's like, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like to me. And I was like, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Nope. No. And here's the thing. I don't like that. Um, I say it every time that we do the show. <laughs> people are sorry. People, we've probably lost listeners because I say it all the time. I hate when people say, you're funny for a girl. Oh, yeah. That bothers me. Yeah. I should be funny for a comic. I love it. Who gives it. a shit if I have a vagina? Last time I was at Sidebar, Brian Preston came up. He, Isn't he, he the best me. man on the planet? Oh, yeah, he's great. I, I really admire him I a lot. I love him. He, he, um, he introduced me, right? And he's like, and next up, we have a... And I was like, oh, God, he's, he's going to lady it. A person! Yeah. Give it up for Samantha Kelly. And I thought yeah. that was fucking awesome. Because, yeah. I, I mean, it's a minor pet peeve. That's another thing I don't like about... When, uh, when you're a woman, yeah. they're like, and next up... Get ready, hold your seats. We have a lady coming up on the yeah. stage. I bet she's gonna say some crazy things. Yeah. <laughs> 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 lady. <laughs> I had a guy in Hagerstown. I don't even remember the name, but it was like a guy and he kinda was like running the show with his wife a little bit. I drove all the way to Hagerstown with Brian Preston, <laughs> my my buddy. And uh it was like, Oh, I bet you guys didn't think there was a female or oh uh, but, you know, God. let's hope she's funny. And it was like, I was like, are oh, you? Oh, pr- let's hope she's Meanwhile, funny. they chopped, like, don't ask me for credits if you're not even going to use them. They mm-hmm. fucked up. Like, Mickey Coachella, who's like a known local icon. Yeah, absolutely. Chopped up his name. They were like, oh, you know, she does work with Mickey Cuccinella. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my <laughs> fucking <Cuchinella>. God. <laughs> I'm like, what is, I was like, why do you even ask me for credits if you don't give a fuck? You're not going to pronounce a name right. And they're going right. to bring me up saying you hope that I'm funny. Plus, there was a drunk heckler that they kicked out once before who they allowed back in in the front fucking row. What the fuck? And I was like, this is the worst situation I think I could possibly be in besides the cheap, you know, $3 Patron shots that I've been given. (laughs) This is ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I I, I was so pissed. And I even made a Facebook status about it. and And the wife of the guy contacted me. And she's like, we thought you did really well and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I just think that you set me up for failure Mm -hmm. like don't ask for credits if you don't give a shit don't say that you hope that i'm funny if you're the the one booking me you wouldn't just hope that i'm funny right that's that's fucking please stop i know and that's the thing where you want women to have more opportunity but you don't want someone to just add you to the bill because you're like okay we need a chick yeah let's pick and i mean if you but at the same time it's like oh well magoobies if you need a chick Mm -hmm. and you just happen to be booking oh i don't know jim brewer yeah okay Right. Sorry, I'm gonna eat that bullet. Yeah, oh, we need a vagina. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> you have to. I'm exactly. in. I'm in. <laughs> Sometimes you're just like, oh, I'm gonna choose when I can be, you know, fighting for my gender. <laughs> but Andrew would never do that. He's, you know, what I mean, he's like, I want you to be clean. I don't care if you have a, a penis or a vagina or both. Do cl- do cl- ten clean minutes. Right. So I don't know. I agree with you, and I don't. Have you ever done that guy's room? Is he, re- he reached out to you, right? Yes. Um, he did reach out to me. I I haven't. I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. I Hopefully he'll forget. I was like, yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, he won't. He'll email <laughs> you like 17 times. <laughs> Ask I'm anyone. Not, I, I would like to at least attend it, maybe, and yeah. see what a 
um, horror show it is, because that's what everyone's claiming, that he has, like, no control over the audience. Everyone's talking over the comics. And it's I, very frustrating. I didn't hear that. I heard it gets a decent crowd. I heard it gets Oh, yeah, the pretty... crowd is amazing, okay. but they're not paying attention. They I actually may have to check it out, because even though I backed out of the show, my boyfriend and Jeremy and all these people that I just... I recommended are still in the show. <laughs> and I was like, I think, well, I didn't recommend my boyfriend. Danny Charnley did, which was super amazing. Oh, and okay. I recommended Jeremy Hall and Walker agreed to do the show because we were on it. Right. And oh, it's like, awesome. I feel guilty because I backed out of that. <laughs> and all these people were like, uh, what are we doing? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm really sorry guys, but I can't, I gotta, I can't do it. <laughs> I um, heard that he paid the comics and joints at the last gig. Please tell me that's true. Is that true? It is absolutely true. Seriously, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I'm writing an. We e- can't I am, record I am, that. <laughs> I'm writing an email. I'm writing an email as soon as we get off the mic. Alleged. Allegedly. Uh, who are the Who are the comics? And then we can ask and see if it's if it's a true story. Yeah, I mean, do you want me to tell you after? No, I fucking use a notepad again. Okay. Everybody hates us right now. <laughs> Everybody listening is like, "Fuck that okay, notepad." I only heard it from one comic, but um, a couple people apparently confirm it. But I only heard it directly from. Hey, from look, one this comic. is fucking TMZ. Yeah. All right, we can we can go far with alleged. these this alleged. Two people, and then the one that you actually <laughs> yeah. got words from. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. All right, we're going to have to wrap this up because we have okay. to get you to a show. Yeah. But um, real quick, five questions. Sure. Uh, favorite band of all time? Favorite band of... um, <sighs> Thin Lizzy. That's interesting. I like that. <laughs> um, favorite movie of all time? The Princess Bride. I have to be stereotypical with that. That's a good... Yeah, it is stereotypical, <laughs> but it is a good choice. Uh, do you have any pets? Um, I have a fucking cat from hell... Named I'm Bellatrix. Gl- I'm glad you said that because cats are awful. <laughs> my cat is awful. Yeah. And okay. my dad um, recently rescued a mouse from the pawn shop where he works. How do you rescue a mouse from a pawn shop? Because they have um, an arachnid, um, a tarantula as a pet, and they feed it live mice. But for some reason, this mouse was too big for the tarantula to eat. And my father's a fucking sap, so he saved it. Can you just write everything down? <laughs> that's a, that's another... Yeah. That's, a, that's chapter nine of <laughs> the Samantha, Samantha Kelly. Kelly story. Yes. Uh, favorite celebrity that you want to bang? Neil Gaiman. He's a writer. Okay. <laughs> is he attractive? He's, I have a thing for middle-aged British men. Inte- you know, intelligent middle-aged you know, British men. You know, that's acceptable, and I think mm-hmm. you're going to get along with my friend Laura just fine. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and your favorite inspirational quote? <sighs> my favorite inspirational quote. You could be quote. self-written, whatever. Mm, self-written. Like, um, a, like a mantra, something you use, something that like pushes you, go to the next step. Okay, um, there's, this is a, requires a, a, couple, a second of backstory. There's a comic book writer named Alan Moore who has a character named John Constantine who is like a magician or something. Okay. And Alan Moore claims he met John Constantine once, met his own character in a cafe in London. And John Constantine apparently whispered in his ear, you want to know the secret about magic? Any cunt can do it. <laughs> Any cunt can do it. That, that's, and for some reason, I just apply that to everything. Of co- that's, you know, that, ex- <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> All right, Samantha uh, Kelly uh, on Twitter. What is uh, what is your Twitter um, handle? Sam and Kelly. I, I I promise I will update more. Sam I'll write and about my Kelly and uh, you more are than on one tweet. <laughs> only, only one tweet. One tweet. <laughs> it could be two by tomorrow, guys. You don't know. You don't know what the future holds. <laughs> um, Facebook, Samantha Kelly, and upcoming shows tonight. You're Myth and Moonshine. I really no upcoming shows. I'm apparently supposed to do Myth again January 6th. We'll see if that happens. How about we just fucking say it's going to yeah, happen? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. My first 15 minutes, I think. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. You can be found at Sidebar Monday nights. Y- yes, Sidebar. Are you there every Monday night? Not every, but usually like Most times. two, three times a month. Um, I get I get that you're still working mm-hmm. and you're still like building a, you know, a name for yourself. Mm-hmm. But I appreciate you taking the time and I do feel that you are probably the most entertaining person that i've <laughs> i've gotten to interview oh my god thank you she, and i mean so much she needs to come back here's the thing <laughs> i've had i've had brilliant genius entertainers on this couch Absolutely. like I, like justin schlegel hands down is one of my most favorite comedians of all time <laughs> y- i don't even think that he would even open up about any of of his backstory the way that you did <laughs> like that's what i'm saying like you're just so yeah. raw classic like, foot and mouth syndrome you are so raw and edgy that i i'm just uh I'm gonna say I'm in a little envy, little 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 sin there, a little. <laughs> no, no way. I envy it a little bit because I don't think <laughs> I could be that exposed. Yeah, like you're, I you're very comfortable being that exposed. I open up enough, mm-hmm. but too much is too much. Yeah, yeah. But her dad didn't call. That's true. My, yeah, well, th- my dad definitely was like, "Oh, it's a live show. I better give her a ring." <laughs> That's where my dad's head's at. 
<sighs> I know. Let's all sigh in the mics <laughs> for our dads. <sighs> we well, we just raised a bunch of dick joke telling female comedians, guys. Yeah. Let's clap it up for our dads. <laughs> all right, all right. Michael, play us out. <laughs> You've been listening to Wendy and Friends. You can find more information on Wendy and her comedy at wendytownsend.com. Wendy is also on Twitter at Wendy Stars. That's Wendy with an I. <laughs>